Mark, what the hell? You uh, passed out drunk again? Oh, I was out with Alec Baldwin. We were drinking, doing shots. Oh, that guy can't stop. Oh, no, he loves a shooter. Oh, Whew, yeah. You all right? Oh, okay, I'm, I'm a little hungover. I need a drink and a shirt. <laughs> well, I got your shirt with that new merch. <laughs> we might be drunkpod.com. All, all right. kinds of cool stuff. This shirt, this shirt. And of course, I got a drink for you. Oh, beautiful. Bodega Cat Whiskey. Don't drink responsibly, because we make more money if you don't. Yes, you got that right. Keep driving. <laughs> <laughs> Sheath underwear. Summer's coming, and that means sweaty dick season. Sam might be wearing them right now. Look at that. What's a better uh, promo than that? If you're tired of your dick getting stuck to your balls and your balls getting stuck to your leg, it's sheath underwear. Two pouches, one for your dong, one for your sack. Nothing sticks together, so you stay cool and comfortable all summer long. Oh, I didn't even have to look, and I'm wearing it too. Oh my god! One, one for your, one for your sack, and one for your mistress. Yeah, Sheath was created by U.S. Army soldier Robert Patton. Not only did he make an awesome product, but you can support a veteran-owned company and the podcast at the same time. For our ladies in the audience, check out Sheath sports bras, bikini briefs, and boys shorts. They have tons of cool patterns. You got Dylan Mulvaney sporting them. It's great. It's, uh... <laughs> so you can have tons of cool patterns and uh, ready for any occasion. Go to sheathunderwear.com and use promo code DRUNK to get 20% off your first order. That's Sheath's 100% money back guarantee. Sheathunderwear.com, promo DRUNK. Sheathunderwear.com, code DRUNK for 20% off. Your first order, go to Sheath Underwear and let them support your balls. The best, the best. Yo, yo. Hey, hey, folks, we're back. We might be drunk. And it's just us. Ah, finally. I know. All these fucking guests. Dead weight, I call them. Yeah, dude. Fuck them. Yeah. And Sally. Speaking of dead weight, Sally Q's is here. But uh, no, it's good. Uh, good to see you, buddy. Hey, good to be back. Just us. Just us. We can be alone. So much to talk about. Yeah, we, you've been on the road for years. Yeah, you too. That's true. We don't have lives. No, we I like nothing. it. Yeah. I like the road. Me too. You know, people are like, "Oh, the road must be so hard." I'm like, I'm in a hotel room, eating ice cream naked. Yeah, yeah it's great. <laughs> what the hell am I complaining about? I <laughs> love the road. You can eat ice cream naked at home. Ah, I got a wife, you know, that might turn her off a little <laughs> or turn her on. But, you know, you sleep in. You Ooh, I, I got an ice cream rack for you, motherfucker. Oh, OK. So Jenny's. Uh, no, that's a good one. All right. Ben and Jerry's churro flavor. Whoa. Cinnamon ice cream, dude. It's like 1,200 calories per pint. Worth yeah. It. It's mad good. All right. Churray for churros. Yeah, uh, it's damn. That's, that's a good one, dude. Holy All right, shit. I'm down. Yeah, I'll tell you, I gotta, I gotta. You want to talk sweets? I'm yeah. eating puffins daily. You ever eat puffins? They're good. Yeah, with a little so good yeah. cereal. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. Trader Joe's always yes. Yeah, yeah, peanut yeah. butter. Get the peanut butter. You'll you'll jizz. I like the yeah. I like I love peanut butter cereal, dude. I uh, I was in the supermarket. hadn't been there in a while, and there's some ice cream brand. I'm in Texas. There's some ice cream brand where all the people on it are special needs. And it took me a second. I was just, you know, they're all on the cover. And uh, and I kind of just hold one up. I was like, oh, I think everyone on here is special needs. Mm. And a guy walking by without even breaking goes, yeah, and if you eat it, you'll turn into one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even break. That's pretty good. Yeah, it was a drive-by zinging. Yeah, I love those. But, uh Wait, why are there special needs people? Because they give money to give special needs people uh, employment. Oh. It's a good cause. It's but you know, I mean, the guy's got a point because you look at the underwear commercials or the underwear ad, and it's always a ripped guy. <laughs> you don't turn into them. You don't turn to them. I guess you're right. So you're yeah. not going to turn into that guy either. Yeah, special needs. So yeah, you're fine to eat howdy. Yeah, it looked good actually. Birthday cake flavor, all that. Love it. birthday cake. Anything. Holy shit. Oh yeah, love that. Birthday cake, good flavor. Uh, I had a fudgy the whale last night. Yeah, you ever had that? No, is it good? It's a it's an ice cream. I know cake. what it is. I don't think I've had it. No, I never had it either. I'm from the south, and it was amazing. Blew my mind. Yeah, dude. Fudgy the whale. There he is. Look how cute. You guys like ginger ale? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. sure. Not the people. <laughs> Just the food. Um, I'm your friend. I'm joking. Ooh, we do like him. You know, so this was a local cookie New York puss. Thing. Cookie, cookie puss. puss. That's yeah. great. <laughs> Got a dick on his nose. Oh yeah, 
and a puss in his name. Yeah, good Look for him. That. That's a, that is a dick nose for sure. I think they knew what they were doing. Yeah. So I was just in Montana, speaking of the road. Mm -hmm. Never been. It's beautiful out there. It's a bitch to get there, but did Bozeman and Great Falls. Um, we go to the hot springs. That's like their thing there. Mm -hmm. It's just it's freezing cold. It's mountains, but they have these hot kind of ponds you can sit in, and it's so nice. It's like a hot tub. And uh, after you get in the hot springs, you go into the shower, and some guy goes, I'm talking to my friend in the shower, and he goes... You sound familiar. And I go, oh, yeah. I'm with a naked guy. And he, I'm like, oh, I thought this was some gay code. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he goes, I don't have my glasses on, but you sound like a comedian I know. And he was like doing the squint like the – he had no glasses on. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm a comedian. And he goes, uh, yeah, I don't know what your name is, but I like this comedian. And – we got to talking. He didn't know it was me, but he knew my voice because he couldn't see me. That's crazy. So was it, it was like a great room? moment, huh? Was it a steam steam or room? Steam so room. So like cloudy. Cloudy. So That's he was so like, cool. I, "You sound." I was talking to my friend in the steam room. And he was like, "You sound familiar," but I, and I was like, "Oh, it's not me. It's not me." And I was like faking it. And he was like, man, you sound just like this comedian I know. And then he goes, this guy, Mark Norman. I go, he's good. He's good. <laughs> I'm like blowing myself up. And then eventually I told him. Better to be recognized by your voice than your dick. <laughs> <laughs> True. That's, uh, no, that's crazy, man. That's, I, I, that, that happened to me. I was actually at a Knicks game and uh, with Stav. And <laughs> both happened to both. We got a few times, we, you know, got stopped. But one of the guys grabs me and goes, I fucking love you. And he puts his arm around me and takes a picture. And he goes, thanks, Mark. Ah. And the guy did it to stop. Too. He walked by and he goes, "He goes, you your man, Steve." <laughs> <laughs> you got some of the letters right, <laughs> Steve. Stuff. Has he, have you ever gotten me? I've gotten you. I've gotten you a couple times. Yeah, I get it. Like on uh, on social media, they're like, "Oh, this guy's so funny. I love Sam or whatever." I've gotten Mark a few times. It's funny. Yeah, but. Uh, and yeah, also, man. when I do Q&A, I go, shout out, like, a news story. They go, Sam Morrill. I get you, too. That's a big one. Yeah. What do you say for me? Because I never know what to say. I say he's uh, he's dying of AIDS. <laughs> All right. I well, say it's very hard it to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. What do you say for me? I say, uh, funny guy, big eyebrows. Because <laughs> you got to say something silly. Eyebrows. Um, I got to pee for you. All right. I saw a guy describe someone recently as... Just a straight guy, just like a regular, you know, white straight guy just goes, uh, he goes, well, this person was a bundle of joy. Mm. I was like, what are you, a fucking chatbot? GBT? <laughs> like, who speak? that's not how people speak. Right. That's like, it felt like manufactured. Yeah. It didn't feel like an authentic thing to me. I don't like bundle of joy because people usually only use it sarcastically. Like, exactly. you're a real bundle of joy. That's how it should be used. Yes. It's a ridiculous... Calling a person sincerely a bundle of joy is insane. It's insane. Yeah. My P coach in fourth grade hated me, and my mom came to pick me up one day, and he goes, excuse me, miss, is this your bundle of joy? And she's like, yeah. And then he just shit on me in front of my mom for like five wow. minutes. It was brutal. And my mom hated it. But uh, that's the only time I heard someone refer to me as a bundle of joy, and it wasn't good. That's good. Yeah, he was a dick. How about you got any peeves? Uh, yeah, I got a couple, actually, because I haven't seen you in a while. But uh, how about this one? I got the guy who said... Hold on, I wrote these down. Hold on, hold yeah, on. I got a few, too. I want to uh, make let sure let I don't me, forget. Because I I when I don't see you for a while, I like to write them down. Hold on. What do you got here, Sally? Sally's got some... I got a peeve some here. Some plagiarism. A, a, a listener called in here. Uh-oh. Hold on a second. Let me find it. Okay, hold on. We're all looking at screens. We're yeah, fucked. not what good, not good. <laughs> I got another pee for you while we're waiting. All right, please. I love when a giant beloved celebrity dies and someone will write it in, in their obituary. They go, I hope I'm remembered like this someday. You won't be. Ooh. <laughs> you won't be. Because if I outlive you, I'm writing one of the Instagram posts and you ain't Harry Belafonte, motherfucker. Okay? <laughs> yeah, how about you, you go earn it? Earn it. We're not just going to talk about you like Harry Belafonte. He's yeah. Harry Belafonte. It's kind of like when you get into a crash with uh, you're in the flight of playing with Kevin Hart. It's Kevin Hart died and a bunch of other people. Exactly. What uh, do you got? Hold on. I can't find it. Sally, play your video. Okay. So I have uh, a listener, uh, a viewer called in a, a video peeve here. What am I like? You know what my pet peeve, my Larry David moment is? Is when people are in the passing lane and they're going as slow 
as everyone in the regular lanes. And they block the whole thing. And you can't get around because I like to, um, yeah, yeah, I got to move. And when I feel trapped, I go all Larry David on him. I'm, I'm Thank you for calling in Brad P. Oh, that peeve stunk. That was Brad Pitt. All right. Well, I'm glad to know he's a fan of the pod. And uh, yeah, thank God you're handsome. That's uh, it's it is funny to hear Brad Pitt be like I'm like I, I'm like Larry David. <laughs> <laughs> you're not really. Yeah. But uh, right. Oh man, Larry David was at the Lakers game what? the other day, and he's on. T- it's literally Nicholson, Larry David. You're just like wow. man, two people I'd like to hang out with very badly. But of course, ne- but Larry David the whole game just legs crossed like. Just looks grumpy, Larry David, the entire time. By the way, it's so funny that so many of the big Lakers celebrities are Knicks fans. Oh, really? Larry David, Sandler. They're Knicks fans, baby. Really? They're ours. They're New York people. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think yeah. Sandler was born in Brooklyn. His dad's his dad is a New York sports guy, so he's a New York sports guy. Uh-huh. So and he's like Knicks, Jets, Yankees, Rangers. Uh-huh. And Larry yeah. David, obviously, Sheep's Head Bay. Brooklyn, yeah. So there you go. All right, hold on. I had my peeve. Give us a peeve. Uh, I'll tell you, we need a peeve, man. Oh, it was big. It's a good one. My peeve is when people don't write down their peeves. I know, I know. I I got a million notes that I can't sift through. Well, one is uh, I have a guy who always says exactly. He says exactly to everything. Yeah. But everything can't be exact. So I'll be like, uh, "Ah, I was late. I got stuck behind some guy. He's like, oh, exactly. And I'm like, no. That doesn't make sense to what I said, but he just says exactly every time. So he'll be like, uh, you owe me two bucks. And I'll be like, oh, here's three. Is that all right? He's like, exactly. I'm like, that doesn't fit. He says exactly for everything. Hitler killed six million Jews. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Wasn't six million and one? No. By the way, a lot of black uh, Down syndrome, gay, and yeah. uh, gypsies. gypsies. Yeah. In the you know Holocaust. what I was, I, was reading, I was reading is that uh, <laughs> they did like, they did these uh, trials, I believe, about for, you know, like to when you. Nuremberg. The de- not, no, the denazification, they did like classes you would have to do. It's not Nuremberg. It was mm. like, uh, so people like Hugo Boss, who manufactured Nazi uniforms, they do like, what level Nazi are you? And he had to pay a fine. No, he was a low level Nazi, but the fine was for having slave labor. Wait, what? Which, guess what? Pick one. <laughs> yeah. Don't wait be a, a Nazi and have slaves. It's kind of shitty. But, uh, oh, yeah. that's wild. Yeah. Slave labor. And his kids rebranded. So his kids like made Hugo Boss. You know, like 1948, like, you know, Nazi light. Well, that was the guise of the work camps. They called them work camps. They would have yeah. to work to help the German war engine. That was the idea. Yeah. So that they were slaves. Aha. Uh-huh. Do you guys want employment for no money? <laughs> Sounds like slavery. No, it's work. Right. You don't like work? It's amazing that Hugo Boss is still around because, you know, some guy shits in the in the ice cream thing at McDonald's, and we're like, "All right, McDonald's is fucked. We had to shut it down." I guess just Subway's still going. Yeah. So I guess see, these. But Jerry wasn't the founder. True. Well, I guess Hugo Boss wasn't either. If, if Steve Subway was a child diddler, <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah. Bo- or Bobby Blimpy. Bobby Blippi. <laughs> but uh, no, it's uh, Puma and Adidas Nazi party people. Too. Puma! I know, I found out. I'm bummed. I fucking, I, I like know. Pumas. Coco Chanel, too. Yeah, yeah, that's right. She blew a bunch of Nazis, apparently. Yeah. I think she was just a collaborator. Ah, uh, yeah. that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> Collaborate with Nazis. Do you want to collab? <laughs> Do you want to collab on I'm being a Nazi? I'm going to send you a Nazi request. Can you accept it? <laughs> Damn. Why isn't she canceled? She's dead. Yeah, but that doesn't stop other people. That's true. We got mad at John Wayne or whoever. This smells fucking insane. This is a ginger cocktail? That's uh, lemongrass ginger margarita. What the fuck? I hope you don't say that when you go down on your lady. <laughs> that smells insane. <laughs> I gotta bring something back to Southeast Asia, right? Ooh, that's, that's what I like. Good. I like to go down and go, your pussy is redonkulous. <laughs> <laughs> Should we collab? <laughs> say it again. What is it? Lemongrass ginger margarita. Like Thai. Yeah. That is incredible, dude. Very nice. Boy, you're on fire today. Yeah. Damn. Like I said, you got to bring something back from the trip, right? There you go. Besides the clap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, 
This is really fucking. I'm not a big margarita guy, admittedly. I love how you make palomas. I like. I don't like sweet cocktails. Me I like like no. I like like bitter. I like like as sweet as I get is like a Manhattan. That's kind right. of as sweet as I'll go, but you're an old fashioned. But like that, well, Manhattan's not entirely sweet. It's right. Got a bitter note for a little bit removed as well. Like, exactly. I don't like sweet drinks really. I drink like, I like if I drink like non alcohol, it's like seltzer. I'm not. You know. Yeah, I had an opener this week and getting those blue drinks, like those blue Hawaii's, oh, and I was like, How oh, old he, is this opener? He was about 23, and I was well, like, You got to grow up, man. <laughs> you gotta go up and be a real alcoholic yeah just bl- no I see a blue drink I'm like fuck that it always cracks me up when you're at a comedy club and they can't make a proper cocktail but, they, but they'll be like we can do a yellow gummy bear I'm like you can't do a fucking Negroni I know and the amount of sweet drinks going out, I see the bar lady making all the. It's like espresso martini with the chocolate rim. Those are, but the espresso martini is not chocolate rim, but like a straight up espresso martini is pretty fucking good. Oh, I've never had one. Do you don't think those are good? Uh oh, he says Mike's not on. Did we lose all of it? Yeah. Uh muted. muted. Switch it over. I've never had an espresso martini, so they're pretty good. Was that all not usable? No. Just oh, say good. three lady boys into the mic, and we'll just use that. <laughs> three lady boys, three lady boys, three lady boys. We, we uh, <laughs> yeah, I was making martinis over the weekend, man. Just like a fun to just make a fun uh, martini, ch- man. Ch- ch- Throw some blue cheese olives in that shit. Ooh-wee. If that's what you're into, absolutely. Do you not like that? I don't like blue cheese olives in my martinis. What do you yes. like? How about a jalapeno olive? I love a jalapeno. That's or a like good a, one. Uh, you know what's really good? A uh, uh, pickled banana pepper. That's really yeah, good. Martini mm, is fucking yeah. fantastic. Interesting. Uh, but the blue cheese. Do you do the for banana me, pepper? Do you do the banana pepper uh, juice as well? Or a no? little bit, yeah. I'll, I'll do a little bit of the that juice. That sounds amazing. The only, the only thing for me with the blue cheese is that, like, if you add any, like, I'll, I'll do the like normal olive brine, and then put the blue cheese olives on top because otherwise it gets like oily, mm. which isn't like a good feel in your mouth you know? it's funny it. i was just shitting on banana uh, uh, comedy club cocktails but hilarities in cleveland used to do a banana pepper martini that was outstanding really, so, really? Yeah, hilarity's like drink. a classy club you know it's never a, heard of that it's a yeah. really good drink and not a lot of people do it it's very good yeah i like that i like i mean i was a lot of like at home drinks i, I had bro, i had a lot of people try bodega cat over the weekend and they and they loved it hell yeah people were loving bodega cat Get a bottle it's online yeah, a lot of uh, old fashions, Manhattans, you know. Nice. Straight up. Good Keep stuff. them coming. I yeah. wish it was on the shelves. In New York. Well, in hopefully, York. maybe by now it will be. This maybe. might not come up for a while, so. Praying to God. Any other peeves? Ah, oh, I can't remember my peeve. I had a good one, and I, I had it today. It'll come to me. It was something with the wife. The wife is a peeve factory. A peeve cave. <laughs> Uh, she does. I think I've mentioned this before, but she'll two thing women uh, like being called peeves and caves. <laughs> well, she does the thing. Well, she'll talk in the other room. She'll be like, "Can you believe blah blah blah?" And I'm like, Ooh. "I'm in the other room." Yes, so this now is bullshit. this is bullshit. You I know get this? this too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then and I'm she like, expects you to hear what she's saying. What? What? And she's like, "Are you listening to me?" And I'm like, "Well, you got to come in here." And then I end up going in there for her dumb story. And I'm like, you want me to hear this? You come in here. So now we're fighting. We have two rooms. It's yeah. a New York apartment. And she's never come in either of those rooms. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that's uh, – that's. It, it, there's something about that, like the talk in the other room, like come here. That, it is something fucking annoying about that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's tough. It is hilarious when you see people that have been together – for a long time just fight over shit that has nothing to do with that actual like my parents will do this sometimes we're like we were driving and my parents were we were driving to my sister's place in Brooklyn and my parents just it's that thing with my dad we got the car and he's like there's no parking here and my mom's like what and he goes there's no parking here and I'm like could have maybe just tried it one more time. Yeah, yeah. They might have been. There might be something else that led There's into underlying this that preceded there. this. Yeah. Well, one good moment is my lady will just leave everything open. Like she leaves the cupboards open. She yeah. leaves. She'll go in and get the puffins and then leave it wide open so they just get stale. So I go, hey, hey, you gotta close this. They're gonna get stale. Do you hate me? Are you inconsiderate? What is it? Do you, why? Are you, why can't you just close it? And she's like, I didn't think about it. And I'm like, I know, but it's inconsiderate. And so I was like, "You're that's mean. And then I came back later, and she had a, her shit open. So she does it to her shit, too. So I apologized. Because I was like, oh, you're just out to lunch. You're not, you're not doing it to spite me. 
you're just doing. Oh, you thought it was an attack on well, you? Well, not really an attack, but like, hey, I ate your shit, but I I don't respect you, so I left it open. Oh wow, I don't think she would do that to you. I know, I know, but that, after yeah. telling her like, hey, you got to stop leaving this open, all my yeah. shit's getting stale. I thought she might stop doing it, but she didn't. So I was like, oh, this is just you doing it to spite me. But she mm. does it to her shit too. So I was like, all right, you hate yourself. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was a pee, but I realized she does it to her own stuff. So I felt better. What I got one. Yeah, what do you got? People who pretend to be hurt. Uh the victimhood. Yes. Remember that kid growing up you'd be like you were really young and you were playing soccer and you get hit very lightly, but he would go down like he just got fucking hit by Lawrence Taylor. Yes. And you'd be like, oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because when you when I'm really hurt, I'm like, I'm okay. I'm okay. That's when I'm really hurt. That's when you know I'm really hurt. When yeah. I'm like, no, it's okay. Point. It's okay. Good point. When I when people like fall down after they get like you know shouldered by a bicycle, yeah, and I like call an ambulance. It's like get the fuck up. Right. Good point. When like, you're really hurt, you fake it. Exactly. When you're not hurt, you, you fake pretend. It. Yeah, you Sa- fake it. Salakus hits the dude with his car. He's like, oh fuck you, you <laughs> pussy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh like, yeah. Stacy, my wife, she stubbed her toe on something that I just left laying around, and she was like, really? You gotta milk it. Yeah. Milking it. And, then and was Matt like, was like, I'll fucking show you pain. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You think that hurts? Get Miss Pat in here. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, uh, she, and then she, I was like, I'm sorry you stubbed your toe. You're like, this is the most I can do, <laughs> you know? And she was like, uh, you're not sorry. You just think I'm playing it up. Wow. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think I'm playing it up. Projecting. Yeah. She knew she, she was knew. playing it up. So she called you on it. So you'd have to deny it. Yeah. But you yeah. have to delete all this, Peters. <laughs> no, no, no. It's staying in. <laughs> Did she listen? No, I shouldn't listen. All right. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be using the trial of Salacuse versus Salacuse. Yeah. <laughs> I think my lady has a podcast, so she's like, I'm not listening to your podcast. I got my own podcast. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I've dated women who listen to me on podcasts, and it's like they just come up with fights with shit I said on the ah! podcast. That's and I'm just like, oh, so now I got to be cautious. I don't want to be cautious on a podcast. Right, right. I mean, I'm drunk. <laughs> I have to be drunk and be like, was that a bad thing to say? And we're already worried about the internet. Now I got to worry about you coming yeah. at me. She goes, you said something bad in the podcast. I was like, yeah, I might have been drunk. Right. Yes, that's it's the, the name, name of the podcast. That's why we named it that? It's a disclaimer, lady. Exactly. Yeah, it's uh, it's like I have to fight all of Black Twitter and you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's uh. It is a thing. It's like sometimes people will do that when they like listen to your, especially early in the relationship, they want to hear you on pods, stuff like that. And you're like, ooh, this could be a, a problem. Oh, I don't yeah. think I'm that bad on no, pod, but no, at the I same think you're time. you're the voice of reason. Yeah. Mostly. You're <laughs> yeah, a nice one on here. But every once in a while, every once in a while, you say shit you're not thinking. You're like, hey, I'm just trying to be. The intent is always the joke. Of course. You know? Of course. But uh, it is kind of crazy. I can't imagine ever listening to a woman. Like I'm dating on a podcast and just being like, we need to talk. No, no. I am a little upset with something you said. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I think I think we're wired differently. I think women are like, oh, he's on this podcast. I'll listen. I'll learn more about him. Whereas we're like, I'd like to not learn about you. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> I don't know your stuff and what you've done. Mark's like, I was hoping you would speak less. I would never <laughs> seek out extra talking. I mean, this is crazy. Well, but, I would but, rather learn in person and get to know you. Of let's, course. Let's meet Let's hang out. Let's Absolutely. I mean, Strong, I, silent type joke. Give us oh, yeah, it's an old joke. I can't remember. The, the the premise is basically like a woman is allowed to say, I want a strong, silent type, but a guy can't be like, I like a woman who talks very little. That's you know, great. something I need like you to that. Shut the fuck up is what you said. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Yeah, that's that's the right punch right there. That's good. I mean, yeah. it's, there's something about. Uh, it's a double stand. You want to, also, I, it's not like I don't get bothered in relationships. I just try to say, like, hey, this didn't make me feel good. Like, just be quick. And then they say, I say okay, I go, okay, we're good. That's it. Just don't do it again. That's it. Yeah. Why do you we know? need to, to draw it out and yeah. make a whole fight about it? Just um, don't do it again. Yeah. I mean, uh, another one is people who are like, this is kind of a peeve where uh, it's always people who like think therapy is a sham who I'm like, you kind of need it. Oh, every time. You know what I mean? Now, I'm not saying time. everyone needs it, but it does feel like the people who are the most just adamantly against it. I'm like, you should do it. Yes. You know what I mean? Or then you get the people that are like, I gave it a shot. It didn't work. I'm like, I can tell. <laughs> it didn't I work. can tell it didn't take. <laughs> it's like the people who in the street say like, don't tell me how to raise my kids. They're the ones R- that need to know raise how to raise them. your kids. Good raise point. them. Good point. 
So true. <laughs> Miss Pat in here. <laughs> also, why can't I? Why can't people tell you how to raise your kids? I You're horrible watching, at. It. I was watching an old Mad Men episode where uh, one of the kids is running around recklessly, and it's like season one, and another dad slaps him in the face, and you think that the kid's dad is going to be like, "Don't do that," but he's like. You see, you should behave. Uh, you were allowed to hit other people's kids. Oh back then. yeah, I got hit by other parents. I think that's fucking awesome. <laughs> I think we should bring that. I think strangers should be allowed to hit. I think we should be on a flight. The kids like, wow, I should be allowed to. I should be able to smack him around a it's little. Like outsourcing. Yeah. <laughs> get this pad in here. Yeah. So yeah. You got hit by other. Parents? Oh yeah. I mean, I wouldn't. I didn't get beat up, but it would be like, like, hey, you know, stop that. I was like. It's very jarring when you get hit by another parent because you're like, oh, I don't know how to feel, you know? <laughs> when you get hit by your own mom, you're like, ah, fuck you, mom. But when you get hit by someone else's parent, you're like, I'm going to come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My first direction. Uh <laughs> Woo. Now I need to get my balls stomped on by a stranger. <laughs> That's how it starts. How about those Wall Street guys? They love getting the balls stomped on. Yeah, what is that? They're like you're you're dominant in real life and the sub in the sack? That's is that cliche, how it goes? But is that real? It must. I mean, I don't think. It, I can't say it, it's I always it's real. real. My guess is they're the guys who can pay for it. And so we hear about it. Well, they get they they're so powerful that they have to flip it. Well, you think they feel guilty for all the money they're making and in the way they're making it, and they're like, "Let me pay someone to stomp on my nuts a little bit. I'll keep making the money, but I do I should get my kit, my nuts stomped." There's tires, something you know? to that stomping yeah. on everyone else's nuts. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. I think it's the same way. Like the super trillionaire millionaire is like this big. A uh, charitable guy, because he kind of feels guilty about how much money he has. So he's like, "Here, let me put a bunch in uh, charity." It was like the Wolf of Wall Street guy. He's like, "I got my money by ro- you were ripping off a bunch of people. Let me have a prostitute just punch me in the face a few times." You know? Yeah, it's ex- guilt. It's probably guilt. It's and some guilt. like subconscious. You know? Yeah, yeah. I've never had that urge. I've never made any money. I've never had that urge either. <laughs> I've made a few bucks, but I've never been like, I need, I get enough shit all day. I don't mind like a tease, like a woman, like kind of like a, a, a hint of insult, a little hard to get, but like not like humiliation. That to me is like, Duh. humiliation is like, I get enough of that at work. Exactly. You know? New material. I'll just go back to, to- <laughs> I'll just go back to Toledo. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> <Rough crowd. laughs> I was just there yeah. and it wasn't pretty. Oh my God. Need Brutal. Other people. I'll tell you. Rough city. I timed it. Check spot took 40 minutes. 40. 40? My act was 55. Damn. So it's a 15 minute non check. Brutal. I timed it. Were you the funny bone? Yeah. Yeah, that one I've had some I've had some rough ones there. Oh yeah. That's a Toledo's just not a good place. It's a bummer. The good thing is you can call out how shitty it is, yeah. you know, and how much it sucks there and they're like, "We know, we know." No, I bet like I bet it'd be more fun now. When I I played there a good amount coming up and I was like, "Man, I am fucking bombing i remember playing a club there once and uh it was called uh laughs inc l-a-f-f-s i've heard of this yeah, place didn't last long and uh i was the last comic ever to perform there now you got the Actually, last laughs <laughs> if you squeeze that together it's laugh sink laugh why would they make that it's laughs inc laughs inc like laughs incorporated i know but if you oh okay i spelled it wrong there you go. <laughs> so I remember getting to the airport after this guy drove me there, and I was like, "Oh, you know, thanks for having me. Whatever, tough week." But like, thanks. And they were they were nice enough. And uh, and uh, I I get to the airport. My manager at the time was like, "Did you cash the check yet?" And I was like, "I'm at the airport. What do you mean did I cash the check?" He goes, "Cash it immediately." And I was like, "What?" He goes, "They're done." Whoa. So I remember like texting the guy, like, "Dude, I'm so sorry." And he goes, "About what?" And I was like, well, "I'm not fucking. I'm not gonna be the one to break the news." Jesus Christ! Whoa! Yeah. I've heard of walking a room. I've never heard of closing a room. I closed it. Holy I shit! I closed that room down. Wow! Yeah. Last. I lap. almost wish we had like some of the footage from the early days just to see how we handled some of that shit because some of those cries i mean i i don't want to watch it but everyone every part of me like the masochist in me wants to see it a little bit yeah for sure because you do get some moments in those rooms because they're you your back is against the cliff yeah. and you're this young comic so you just pull every sword out of your or out of every tool out of your tool belt trying trying to get them over and anything and it's it's ugly and the beauty of those rooms though the one shining light is that there's no stakes and there's no comics there to judge you, so you can just hack it up, fuck with a guy, call a lady a coos, or call that guy a douche, and get away with it. Yeah. It's in the middle of nowhere. Oh, I remember saying shit where I'm like, ooh, I'd be in trouble if anyone of any exactly. was in this room. Exactly. Just, just going. I remember doing prom shows and like, holy shit, if there's video footage of these, the oh. shit I was saying to these kids, like, 
gear, you're just like, oh boy. Oh, for sure. Remember when Tosh got in trouble for that rape joke? And he's like, yeah, I hope you get raped right now. And it got a big laugh and it went on the news and he got in tons of trouble. I was like, man, I said that on Thursday in, uh, <laughs> in Youngstown. Mark wasn't even on stage. <laughs> <laughs> he said to a woman at the mall. <laughs> I was talking to a Girl Scout. <laughs> but yeah, a I lot of about that. Yeah, I mean, it's just really, uh, you deal with so many just rude pieces of shit. That of course you snap. Of it's, course, it's if you didn't snap, that's the person I'm worried about because they're holding it in and they're going to murder a fucking person at some point. Yeah, Michael yeah. Richards was right. Let's finish it up. Yeah, yeah. I think he did nothing wrong. <laughs> and <laughs> now that was that's not how you handle it, obviously. But uh, damn, was he funny as Kramer? <laughs> <laughs> so somebody said something to me today. They said, uh, "Covid killed some cities," and I said, "Well, which ones?" He said, "San Francisco." Oh, no, come on. I was just there. It's great. It's great? Yeah. I love it. It's falling apart. Getting a lot of bad press. A lot of it's the media, dude. It's like, it, here's my issue with it. It's like, I think a lot of it is like the media, like, they want you to think it's a good story. Like, yeah, sure. Like, California government has been atrocious, but I think a lot of it's a good story. People did this with New York. New York's dead. It's not fucking dead. Shut the fuck up. Like, yeah, we got some problems, but every city has problems. Every major densely populated city has problems. But you see it with the media where, like, the Cash App guy gets murdered. Oh, you can yeah. see how badly they wanted it to be a crazy homeless person. Totally. No, was guess it? what? No, it was some fucking dude that he knew. Fr- yeah, he Is was that dating right? some dude's girl and the guy, a sister. So that guy what? killed him for dating his but sister. But they really were trying Whoa. to tee it up like, this, I guess this city's gone to hell. A guy got murdered. And you're like, no. I didn't know that. No. It's, yeah, somebody it's, knew. I, I so I and I, look I think San Francisco is a great city so I hate when I hate when that shit is uh it's I hate when people are like this city's dead shut up cities go through stretches you know what I mean like it's it's a it's a great city yeah. well I think the real test I didn't know that about the cash app guy that's crazy the real test is how many people are leaving I think when people are like really exodus on a city that's a sign because I a don't live people, in all a lot these of pe- A lot of people left New York. I mean, there, there was a mass exodus for sure here, but mm. you know. But guess what? New They're young people, back. new young people come here, and right. that's, that's okay. Some people, you want to move to the suburbs, move to the fucking suburbs. It was you were probably going to move there anyway. You just probably moved there five years earlier because of COVID. Good point. And the problem with the city, with New York, with COVID hit. New York, the city, is what you're paying for. You're paying for all the restaurants and the nightlife and the exactly. energy and all the people. So when the city shuts down, you're like, all I have is this tiny apartment. I don't get the whole city, and I'm paying out of the yin yang for all this fucking this tiny apartment. And the groceries are expensive, so I get why people. It's left like fucking COVID. a girl, like you're dating her, but she's got a bad personality, and then she's like, no more sex. You're like, I gotta get out of exactly. It. That's what it's like. Great uh-huh. analogy. Yeah. Perfect. I'll tell you, the sex stopped in here. Do we have any good uh, emails? Yeah, we got a few. Well, do you want to do news stories first? Oh, yeah, we got news. Oh, yeah, bring on the news. Email. Disregard. Fake news. The news will not replace us. (laughs) All right, here we go. This smells so good, too, by the way. Yeah, when you crush up the lemongrass, it just lets out all the aromas. That's like Ooh, unreal. Ooh, very nice. And the, the thing ginger. is, like, if you have yeah. this stick, you just put it in your nose, you don't smell anything, but you crush it up, everything comes it out. It activates it. Activates yeah, that is it. like one of the best drinks I've ever had. I'm not a margarita, margarita guy there at you all. Go. It's like when your uh, toilet clogs, if you let it sit, the smell will go away. But right when you flush it, it activates it. That's exactly how I like to think about my <laughs> drinks, dude. I, I clog every toilet on the road. This is like way. just after I take a number two. I'm going to put that on the next menu. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Poo poo platter. You know when you drop a deuce in the we might, the we might be drunk that's recipe what this book? There we the, go. That's the highlight. All right. So, um, New York 311, <laughs> that's our non emergency hotline, is there to log complaints about noises or rats, but it's also. Uh, has been there to field some bizarre requests like, uh, can you check if my boyfriend is married? Someone asked that. Ooh, uh, I like please it. Please trans- transfer me to a UFOologist. Ah. And then one caller asked to be asked to be talked through the steps of boiling a live chicken, while another wondered if they can claim their dog on their taxes. Wow. Claim the taxes there, is yeah. not bad. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a good idea because it is a, a dependent. Well, it lives with you. It's a roommate who's not paying rent. So I guess that is kind of dependent. You feed it, you house it, you medical it, 
You play with it. I'm going to guess that person was a Jew, the chicken person was Haitian, and there's a new game show. Uh, what and race? They... Oh, I love Drunk Sam. Uh, what right. was the other one? Sorry. UFOologist. All right, that guy's a psycho. We know that. Oh, my God. And can, yes. and can you check if my boyfriend is married? That one I get. Yeah, but that's not for three one one. That's like it's again, it's rats. That's what you well, got to no, hire like a PI. Con- connect me to P- yeah, connect me to a PI. A PI. Yeah. That's what it, that's what like a PI does. They're like they. I feel like that's most PI jobs. You just like ring. That's you know. Yeah. But, well, can you check social media for that? This is what sucks about being a lady. Is there's so many man lies. Well, I bet a lot of men have. If you are the type of dude to do that, you probably have like a private. Ah, uh, true, shit. true. Yeah, there's so many dudes out there. Who, because they say women want the top one percent of guys, and so all the other guys are getting getting nothing. So, like the top ten percent of men, like the successful, tall, good looking, uh, cool guys, are getting all the pussy. So, I think a lot of guys have to lie, and a lot of the guys who are already married, who are in the ten percent, still want to fuck other chicks. So they have to start a whole new profile. Does that make sense? The other guys aren't getting laid, so I feel like the women are going after the same guys who are already married because that guy's in the 10%. Interesting, yeah. See I what mean, I'm saying? I mean, uh, a man, it's one thing to be like, this guy I'm seeing, is he married? My boyfriend, is he married? Mm. That's fucking, that sucks. That's like, okay, you're in it and you don't trust this person at all. That fucking sucks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's like. That's tough. What, like, can you imagine, like, how long is this dude disappearing for? That's what I want. Like he's married. Yeah. What do you? What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Like what gave? What tipped it off that you're like this guy's married? You know what was the the clue? I love that you're calling three hundred one. Like there's too many rats in this city. Also, does this guy have a wife? Yeah. Does he have another family? Yeah. If you ask me, she's the rat. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Uh, a diner divides up. Di- divides opinion. Okay. A diner divides opinion. Am I reading this wrong? Diner divides opinion? Yeah, keep going. Okay. After putting banana on pizza. This sentence doesn't make sense. No, that makes sense. Diner divides opinion. People are divided on if that's good or not, probably, right? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was a place. This is a guy. I thought it was a diner. Uh (laughs) Okay, so it's a single guy. A guy divides opinion after putting banana on pizza. People have been left miffed at the fact that the diner person has put banana on pizza. Sparking a debate about whether fruit actually belongs on it or not. I, I, people can't decide. I'm in the minority. I think pineapple and pepperoni on on pizza. If you do it right, it can be really good. That we went to this like good place in LA. We had it delivered to the uh, venue, and it was like pineapple jalapeno pepperoni it was fucking great. It was like a specialty pie. Mm. I thought I, I I think pineapple can be good. I know that's like some people think of faux pas, but no, the Hawaiian. Yeah. Hawaiian slice. But I like pepperoni instead of ham. Oh, interesting. I'm with you on the whole, on the pizza, but it's, I don't like the pineapple, but that's just me. So I, I'm all for it. If other people like it, go for it. But I, I don't dig it. As long as it's a circ- as long as the pineapple is in like a circle slice and not the big chunks. Mm. I think that's the move. But okay. banana I've never heard of. Banana's weird. Banana's no it's good. It's weird when you kinda like are trying to be an innovator there too. I don't like it. It's like, the part of me, I know it's not, but a part of me is like, are you just trying to get attention? Yeah. This... I talk about these people the way Republicans talk about trans people. I'm like, <laughs> are you just trying to, uh, Do you really you doing? feel that way? What are you doing? Or are you just faking it <laughs> for a little uh, buzz online? Yeah. I don't know. I think he's getting buzzed. This is the Dylan Mulvaney of pizza. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> uh, Nobody wants banana on a pizza. I'm sorry. It sounds pretty gross, honestly. <laughs> yeah, imagine biting into a warm cheesy pizza with a banana on it then getting some dough and uh, tomato sauce with grease and, pie and banana get out of here i'm not so yeah it, it sounds pretty gross to me and every once in a while i'll be de- i'll be shocked by flavor combos like look i'll give it prosciutto and melon should not work it's fucking good there are some combos where you're like okay that's fucking good mm. but this one sounds a little you know a little suspect yeah Buying gifts is hard, whether you're on the hunt for a present for Father's Day or you want to give an unforgettable wedding gift, 
display it has you covered. They make high quality metal posters that can be installed on your walls in seconds. You can literally print anything on a display, make your own custom piece, or check out Displate's officially licensed designs from Harry Potter, Call of Duty, and many more. Uh, yeah, I mean, they got back to school. They got some fun shit in here. You've seen this, right? I got a taxi driver at home. Do you really? <laughs> yeah, I love Ooh, it. I, gotta, I love one of, one of my favorite movies. Uh, yeah, click the link in the description to see some of our favorites and get ready to hang your own piece of art. Save 20% off, 27% off rather, if you buy one or two, or 34% off if you buy three or more. The discount will be automatically applied to your cart when you click our link. Use code DRUNK when you visit Displate.com to get the discount. That's Displate.com, code DRUNK, or click the link in our show, in our show notes. Hell yeah. Hey, Rocket Money. We love Rocket We were just talking about these guys. Inflation's on the rise. We're looking for new ways to save money. Well, one of those ways is Rocket Money. Rocket Money is your personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and spend, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Most Americans think they spend about $80 on subscriptions a month. Well, the total is actually closer to 200 Rocket Money quickly and easily finds your subscriptions and cancels anything you no longer want. Jesus Christ, where's this been all my life? I got all these companies up my ass. They're charging me, and I don't even know about it. They prey on my ignorance. So like, thank like you. Like fucking Jeffrey Epstein or some yes, shit. Yes, exactly. Piece of the shit. Yeah. Fuck you, you motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. I'm still being charged for going to the island. It also helps you manage your finances by categorizing your expenses so you can see where your paycheck is going. The average user saves up to $720 per year, and over 3 million people have used Rocket Money to get a handle on their budgets. Stop throwing your money away, cancel on one of subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash drunk. That's rocketmoney.com slash drunk. Rocketmoney.com slash drunk. Thank you. So we got one here. A yeah. uh, woman finds a man hiding under her bed. Ooh. Thinking that the two felines, thinking that the two felines may have been sleeping under her bed, she reached underneath it only to find her fingertips Fucking touching Dave. human Fucking Dave. That guy's bad. <laughs> 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 Terrified, the 61-year-old woman dialed 911. Wait a minute. Is he dead? Oh, hold on. Okay, Still sorry. developing. The man who had been hiding under her bed crept out. And then fled via the back door. Whoa. 25-year-old Christian Vatovec. They got him. Later apprehended by police near a, uh, near a canal in the area. He was found in possession of a digital camera and a gold ankle bracelet. Wow. Man, he got one of those fancy prison bracelets. Damn. <laughs> That's fucking creepy. That is that terrifying. That sucks because, like, I, I still, like, you know, everyone, you ever just check into a hotel and you, like, open the closet door? Oh, you look, yeah. You look into the, uh, you know, the shower, you pull back the shower. Definitely. Curtain. It, it sucks that, like, now this woman's going to have to do that for the rest of her life, like, really have to do that. Yeah. Wow. She's got to get a boyfriend. This poor lady. It's also, he's just a creep. Yeah. It's weird. You assume the worst. Like, he's going to try to kill you. Like, thank God that didn't happen. But it's just weird to see a dude under your bed and he's just like. All right, bye. And he leaves. Yeah. Also, forget the cats. Get a Doberman. You got to have a dog around now. These cats apparently are just licking the guy, (laughs) you know, while he's under the bed. Uh, Around 80 applicants responded to an unusual job advert. These must all be English, right, Peters? European. Okay. Uh, Small advert searching for a cat chef. The job description stated... That the worker has to take care of the town's approximately 70 stray cats. Mm. The small town also erected a cat statue and added a feline to its emblem to rebrand itself as Russia's foremost cat-loving community. Okay. Well, that's the last direction going up in that town. <laughs> but do you need a cat chef? How about uh, Prerina, Sheba, Meow Mix? We don't need a chef. Especially for the, yeah, why, why are they eating this well? Milk? The strays? Yeah, put out a glass eat? of milk. Did I say, what did I say? Man, you were really slipping, uh, Syracuse. Uh, <laughs> he said way, chef. I'm dyslexic, and this Apparently. is painful for me. <laughs> we need a non-dyslexic Google bitch. What the hell? We should have we should have had that written in our, in your job a requirement here. Job, uh, a cat by the chief. way, by the way, I can't read. 
<laughs> Jesus. Uh, that's fucking great. A cat chef. That changes everything. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, drunk man steals car and realizes he doesn't know how to drive. Damn. Uh, oh. Police notice this strange behavior of a man. Is this, sitting... is this about me? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Uh, the police notice the strange behavior of a man sitting in a car parked in front of a cafe. When asked to identify himself, the man had no formal documents, no driver's license, no registrations for the vehicle, and was that he was sitting in. He also exhibited signs of intoxication. Mm. Well, it'd be funny if it was you, and then you're like, "Fuck it, I'll get on a bike." Ah, shit. <laughs> I can't do that either. <laughs> I'm kind of incompetent. I like vehicles. You're not, vehicle. you're not going to vehicles. I'm not a big vehicle guy. So I saw someone try to zing me like, he, he's 36 and doesn't have a driver's license. I've got a license. <laughs> I just can't drive. That says more about our driving test in America. I know. I charm my way into my license. There you go. I fail twice, and then the third time I go, please don't fail me, and she she laughed, and I passed. Oh, really? Yeah, it was terrible, but she she, she found me funny. I was like, all right. Where'd you, in Midtown? I was like uh, in the Bronx. Whoa. But I, I was like, please don't fail me. I've already failed twice. And I got a laugh at her. I was like, all right. <laughs> that didn't work with my AIDS test. <laughs> so please, I failed too. <laughs> okay, this is our last one. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> High school song. How much, of the, how much of this are we actually keeping? I think half. Keep uh, going. High school sophomore discovered to be over 30 years old. Whoa. Charity Ann Johnson attended Texas High School. What's going on in Texas? For eight months after enrolling as a 15-year-old sophomore. Damn, she must look good. Pull her up. Here we go. Can we see what Charity Ann Johnson looks like? This is like a bad 80s movie. <laughs> you know, hey, I'm going back to school. I got to learn uh, my Whoa. squared roots. Oh, there she is. Yeah, she looks young. Not in the right, not in the mug shot. Jesus Christ, that's, she aged a lot from one to two right there. Yeah. Holy shit. You rarely see people look good in a mug shot. True. Yeah, not, Gary Busey. Yeah, not a good James Brown. You think of the mug shots. Yeah. Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte, that's what I'm thinking, not Gary Busey. Nick Nolte's is rough. He's got a Hawaiian shirt on. Pull up Nick Nolte's Easy. mugshot if you can. Oh, sorry. Salacuse's mugshot. Brutal. Yeah, and he looks rough. He's in a Hawaiian shirt. His hair is all out Easy. of place. <laughs> I hear he's dyslexic. Yeah, weird <laughs> bass breast <laughs> shirt. I think he's rather handsome. Are you kidding? He was a handsome guy. Oh, yeah, he was. Look at that. He looks like hell, the, the <laughs> this crazy hair. <laughs> Jesus, God. <laughs> That's the movie as he goes back to school. <laughs> I'm a second grade student. Everyone's like, what? <laughs> second grade. <laughs> Fucking Gary Busey's in second grade. I used to get that mixed up. <laughs> just, just remake B Billy Madison with yeah, Gary it's Busey. The, it's the R-rated Billy Madison. Mm. <laughs> you got any bits you're working on? Yeah, let's do some bits. We Let's redeem bits. this shit. We're going to have to cut a lot of that, man. That yeah, was that fucking was rough. dead air there. Sorry, we got to look at those before, I think. I think so, yeah. And we didn't have Becky Owen here with the paper. Mm. What Pull is this shit right here? The spicy. Right no, this on the rim? Oh, the Sahim. Gotta Sahim. Got to put this on my lady's ass. Yeah. It's like a little chili salt. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh, you wrote them down on like fucking by hand? I always go hand. I have them too, but I, I put them on my phone also. I have to email myself. I got some real bad takes, some bad ideas, some half-assed, half-baked thoughts. Yeah, what do you got? All right. Is this anything? Yeah. Um, I was watching the NFL draft. Hey, you know, fun seeing these young guys. You know, their whole dreams are coming true. But wouldn't it suck if the NFL draft was like the military draft where they just recruited randos? Like if your number got called, like, hey, sir, I know you're a five foot eight, 150 pound gamer, but you're playing for the or you're playing for the Browns. <laughs> you got drafted. I don't know if that sucks. I think that'd be hilarious. Well, that's, that's how it should work. That would be fun. Yeah, I think that's how we should do the. Actually, they have to take one guy that's horrible and play him every day. Yes, game. yes. And he's like, whoa, I can't, I can't play. Uh, you got, like, oh, you got to do it for your country. You got to guard Odell Beckham for one possession. Yes, yes. You're on the Patriots. Yeah, that's. I think that's funny. All right, that I can't remember. There. there was a comedian had something not like that, but he was like, to make baseball interesting, you know how you have the ceremonial first pitch. 
He goes, I think that should count. I think you should have Danny DeVito throwing out the first pitch. Oh. And then Fernando Tatis hits it for a home run. Who is that? I don't know. Oh, that's Pretty funny, fun. though. I think it's, uh, man, you know who had a great joke back in the day? Dwayne Perkins had a joke about, oh, like, in the, in the playoffs. Uh, the guys always come on, like, this is all about who doesn't want to go home. And he's like, what's about more than that? Yeah. You've know, got to be talented. Like, if you take the Oakland Raiders and put them up against a bunch of abused kids, those kids don't want to go home. Uh, that's a great joke. That's great. Yes. That's a fucking great bit. Um, all right, NFL draft. All right, I'll, I'll keep it then. You think yeah. there's something there? Legs? Yeah. Halfy? Halfy. Okay. I got something about, an idea about, uh, like, these bakeries who won't make uh, wedding cakes for gay ma- uh, weddings. Oh, yeah. I just think it's, like, funny to, like, you spend your whole life, like, you're making sweets and you're just hateful. <laughs> like, like your entire day you're in the back room with, like, frosting and, and sugar and pastries and you're just back there, like, you know what fucking pisses me off? You know, I think there's something about that. It's like oh, also yeah. the gayest occupation in the world. Right. That's what I mean. It's like it's like a very like it should be like a happy. It's like being an anti semite and you just like work in a toy store or something. Right. It's just weird. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I don't know. Uh, yeah, mate, you're making cakes for a living. Yeah. It and it's weird to be like I'm in love with this guy. Like, eh, uh, that's yeah. a little too far. Yeah. Well, you make red velvet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's not natural. Neither is red velvet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's you, have, like... you have rainbow sprinkles. You're right yeah. there. Yeah, you're yeah. so close to gay weddings. Yeah, rainbow sprinkles. <laughs> I hate the rainbow. Yeah, that's the color of your sprinkles. Yeah, yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck the rainbow. Yeah, that's it, something there. It's already, You're already packing fudge. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they, well, they can stop you from... Uh, <laughs> they can stop you from selling it, but they can't stop you from... Uh, Deep throat in the clear in front of them. You go in there. So. <laughs> All right, I don't know. Woo. What do you got? All right, is this anything? So my lady's always giving me shit. She's like, you don't listen, you don't listen. And she's right. I'm not a good listener when, when she's telling a story. But she doesn't listen during movies. Every movie you watch, she's like, who's he again? Why are they fighting? And I'm like, you, you don't, I don't listen to you, but you don't listen during movies. And at least with movies, we can pause it. I wish I could pause her and be like, hold on, I got to take a shit. Let me rewind. This part's boring. I'll fast forward. And then she's like, so I uh, I got no fight with my friend at work. And I'm like, I've seen this one. <laughs> That's the punchline. Or then maybe, or maybe she goes and you go, oh, fuck this. I'll just watch it tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I'll binge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, you say, oh, I binge I binge this show. I would never binge your stories. Yes. I'd never yes. be like, I can't wait for the next one. <laughs> right, right. Like and I know you have that Woody Allen joke. That's a classic. Yeah, I used to have a joke about, like, I was dating a girl, and she came home, and she's like, uh, she keeps talking. I'm trying to watch Annie Hall, and she goes, are you ignoring me during Annie Hall? And I was like, was your story nominated for seven Academy Awards? Oh. <laughs> Great joke. Yeah. So I didn't want to get too close to that. No, I think I think you're fine. But I think yeah, the remote thing. I would never binge your stories. There's something like about like, uh, oh, yeah. It's also like I've heard your stories. That's the other thing. It's like I hate reruns. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, that was another joke I had. It's about like you know when you walk in, you're like uh, you're passing a store and you're like, uh, oh, I love that Chinese restaurant. She goes, you've told me that. I was like, yeah, well, you're the only person I hang out with. Like I spend all my time with you. There's going to be reruns. I can't. Oh, I can't yeah. bring it every night. You know. Right. So the the bit was like something like. Uh, TV show like Dayton is like a TV show where the writing gets progressively worse like season one you're like this is fucking good and then season three comes around you're like we gotta kill off a character <laughs> oh that yeah was a punch. But, I remember that one rooftop uh, special but I think yeah but I think you're I think that's far I think this bit is far from both of those okay great it'd be great to have a remote with a lady yeah I'll pause it yeah I'll pause it I'll pause it check I'll it out later, it later. Uh, like Adam I... Sandler did that what? Oh, click. Oh, click. oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, can I read the info bar? See if I want to listen to the story? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Give me the trailer, maybe. You're like, you got anything on sports? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should mute it and do the subtitles. Oh, the mute well, would be Well, that's the nice. problem. We're so used to controlling everything that we take in, and then she's choosing now. Oh, good right? point. You're like, you're like, fuck, I don't want to hear this. Or can I do a different story? Right. Now you got to hear this one. Yeah, like when a podcast does ads, you can just skip. Be nice to do that with a with a lady or a guy. Oh, All right, what else you got? Hey, so I found out I say the word Nazi too much. Hmm. I say I, I call people Nazis too much. I get angry, and I, I, it was taking me forever to board uh, on Amtrak, and I was like, "Fucking Nazis!" And I realized if they were actually Nazis, I'd be on the train by now. 
<laughs> oh, that's great. You know what I mean? Like that's great. Like, look, the destination wouldn't be as good. But we'd get where I was going. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> All right, there we go. If I was going to Auschwitz instead of Columbus, yeah, I'd be there. They were efficient. They were efficient. You got to give I'll them that. Yeah, efficient people, the Nazis. Yeah, no delays. No. with Nazis. Although you wouldn't get your luggage. <laughs> <laughs> they just throw all that in a pile. Yeah, you're like, where are my shoes? Don't ask. <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't get your luggage. Also, you'd have to ride with your family, maybe. <laughs> no seats. But yeah, it's true. There's a lot of delays on Amtrak, but... Also, on Amtrak, the only difference is we're trying to get on the train. You know, like everybody's yeah. like get a bottleneck going to get on that thing. There was no cafe car with the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have any bagels? Yeah. <laughs> That's big. There's something there. That that bit's what that's else you got? Stage ready, I think. What do you got? Um, all right. So I was playing a video game the other day, which I rarely do. And the lady came home. She's really upset. She's crying. She's like, "I got to fight with my boss at work. I hate her. She drives me crazy." Blah blah. And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm fighting with the boss too here." <laughs> and then uh, she's like, "Are you playing a video game? You're so immature. You're so childish." And she ripped the cord out or the the controller out of my hand. And I remember being like, oh, geez, this is like a whole other video game, you know? And I'm like, I went from a video game to an escape room. I'm like, how do I get out of this, you know? Well, you, got, you got to beat this boss to get back to that boss. Exactly, yes. Yeah. And then the joke, or the, it keeps going. That part, I, I can't really figure out. And then it keeps going where I'm like, I, th I am childish, I am immature, but women, you guys are immature in the bedroom. You like to be spanked, you call us daddy, we play with all your toys, and then I thought maybe I could rip the vibrator out of her hand, like that to be a, to be a, like a tie it all up. I don't know. I don't know where to go with it. Vibrator's funny, yeah. So I got the toys. I got the spank. I got the the daddy. Those are all immature. That's their vibrating controller or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah or like uh, her. Uh, there's something funny about like how both our toys vibrate. Yeah. True. I don't know. <laughs> Something about uh, it's kind of two different bits that I'm trying right, to connect. Right, right. Fighting with her because the original joke was, "You're gonna you're gonna call me childish while you're crying." That's pretty pretty bold. And then I thought, well, that's then she shits her pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one. I can't crack it. The... Yeah, well, it's two different bits. Yeah, because the first one is about like you know. But I think they're connected, right? Yeah, because I mean, they're both immature thing. I'm playing a video game. She's getting spanked. She's calling me daddy. She's using toys. She's mad at you for... You're ignoring her for the video game. Yeah, she's ignoring me with the vibrator. The difference is, you, you, maybe the joke is, when you play with the vibrator, when you want to play, it's kind of like when she wants to play video games. You're like, all right, but you're not that good at it. Ooh, that's interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe I invite her to play the video game with me. You're just hitting the same button. She's like, well, that's what you're doing with the vibrator. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That's not bad. I don't know. Well, do you know how, like, when you're getting hit by a boss in a video game, your controller vibrates? That's supposed to be, like, a bad thing, right? Uh-huh. But when her vibrator vibrates, that's a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. So you just, like, tie those two together. It's like, yeah. I'm getting killed over here, but I'm living over here. Right, like, right. Yeah, do people know about that? The vibrator vibrating? I think everybody plays video games at this point. Okay, okay. That's a tough one. Know. All right, all right. I'll try to connect there's, the vibrator with the here. controller. Yeah. Um, I had one about, uh, like, you ever dating a new person and uh, it makes you realize that your past 17 relationships are all toxic? Because she's actually like nice to you, like uh, like <laughs> this is too real. Like she woke up, she woke up from a nightmare, and I was like, I am so sorry. And she was like, Why are you sorry? It's not your fault. And I was like, Oh my god, <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> yeah, there's like, it's something about like <laughs> it just puts in perspective. You know what I mean? Everything. Yeah, maybe it's like you've worked in all these horrible jobs, and <laughs> you finally have benefits. Yeah, and you're like, Can I get all? Yeah, you have eight days of vacation time. You're like, What? You know, some comparing it to something where you're like, wow, this is crazy. It's so much easier. Like maybe you lived in a 
in a work camp your whole life in uh, Russia, and then you like, get to America, you're like, hey, yes, like I can need, live the, freely? I think you're right. I think it needs an analogy, probably. Oh, maybe it's when you move out. You know, it's like you live with your parents, and they're just busting your ass all day, yelling at you, making you do chores, and you're like, move out and live with eight guys, and you're like, well, we can eat cake in, in the morning. Yeah, there's something. I don't fucking mm. know. What do you got? Uh, that, there's something there. Uh, you've been beaten your whole life. Uh, hold on. All right. All right. Is this anything? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm so annoyed how addicted to my phone I am. I'm so addicted to my phone. And I think it's two things that fucked young people up is phones and Adderall. And they're actually quite similar. They're addictive. They keep you up at night. And our parents gave them to us so we'd stop annoying them. You know? And then I'm like, uh, the phone. And when you run out of Adderall or you, your phone dies, you act the same way. You're like, I got to call my provider, you know, uh, I got to get hooked up. I need another line, another line, like phone line, line. Line of, is, I, I, guess I don't know if it, it reads. It might. People do snort Adderall. I never did that shit, but I think I never some did people either. do it. Yeah. I could change the Coke. You know, you could say, uh, hey, it's addictive. But I think Adderall is better. I think line might work. Does it hit? I haven't tried it, but I'm worried. Phone line almost sounds like a landline because no one talks about a phone line. Yeah. Wait. So say that the last part again. The uh, when you run out of Adderall or when you your phone dies or, you know, let's say you flush it down the toilet, both of them. You're like, I got to call my provider. I got to get hooked up. I got to pay some money. Got to get a new line. I, I got to get a new hookup. Yeah. I got to get a new. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's 5G. Uh, five grams. There's some guy out here who's a, you need the 5G, 4G, LTE, I guess. Oh, you know. yeah, yeah, right. Buy it in Chinatown, buy a knockoff. You can't trade in your old Coke for a better Coke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't be like, this is uh, this is bad Coke. Can I get good Coke? Yeah, this is a Samsung. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough one. I love a good comparison joke. These two oh, yeah, things yeah. are alike, and you right. start throwing about throwing out examples of how they're alike. Yeah. Um, phone. Uh oh, a lot of dead air on this one. No, no, no. We're thinking. That's fine. It's uh, the phone and Adderall. Need a you need a subscription, or with a phone you need a prescription. With a phone you need a Account? What do you call it when you get a phone? There's no family plan for Coke. Oh, there is for Adderall. <laughs> you know, your parents buy it for you. Yeah. Kind of have to go through your mom to get it. On both accounts, the government is listening. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Phone keeps you up at night. It connects you with people. Adderall, you're making connections. You're dealing. You really want to start a business with both. <laughs> Maybe when you, eat, you drop either in the toilet, you're like, fuck my life. Yeah, yeah. Coke or, or phone. Maybe, I don't know. There's like. Right. Yeah, there's there's a lot of examples here. Yeah. Screen time. Maybe there's a way to connect them. When you use Adderall, you look at your phone too much. Ah, shit. AI, Adderall intake. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> um, let me try another. I got. Hit me uh, with another. Is this funny at all? Like, this, I want to do this think is about joke how, like, writing, folks. Does, does, gener does this generation even know what what wedgies are or something? I wrote. Like, mm. I feel like the the bullying is so different. Like now, it's all like you used to get your underwear ripped up your asshole, and it's like it's, it was a simpler time. Now, what do you do? You like ruin someone's life over the internet? Yeah. So I think the angle is like it just doesn't have the personal touch. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we were like goons back in the day, and these kids are like international supervillains. Right. We're right. like we just like ruined your underwear. These kids are like, what's your social security number? Oh yeah, or something like that. I don't. Yeah, know. Yeah, back then we swirl you. Now it's steal your identity. There's something to that, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Back then it took a little sweat. You had to burn some calories to fuck with a guy. Swirly, wedgie, uh, dunk them in the toilet. Uh, you hung their shorts up on the flagpole. 
It was a little yeah. effort. A little effort, but it was also just like not nearly as bad. No, no, no. Now you might like, come home. You might. I. This is an older bit I used to have about like how like back in the day they would like beat the shit out of you, but now it's like like you get catfished. Yeah, it's like you know you would like get a black eye back in the day, but now you like take a greyhound to Syracuse, <laughs> and you're like, I thought you'd be a woman. Yeah. You know, uh, it could be a funny joke. Back in my day, you got wet willy. Now you get catfished. Yeah. It kind of sounds similar, but... There. Yeah, that was an older bit. Fuck. Catfish. That, this is big. I, I like joke, this. Jokes are fucking hard, They're bro. so hard, but this is good. Yeah. It was so uh, micro. Yeah. Now it's like a macro. Like, we ruin your life. We take your credit card account. We take your social security. We get your identity. Oh, my God. How many texts do you get now where it's like, this is UPS? And I'm like, no, it ain't. Yes, exactly. This is a Nigerian prince. <laughs> you got anything else? It was very analog back then. Like, a wedgie yeah. is very hands-on. Yeah. Versus, uh, you know, scamming old people. All right. This is horrible. What do we have? Anything else? Uh, I got a bit for you. Uh-oh. Please. People always say, if you have sex with your clone, is that gay? But nobody ever asks, is it pedophilia? Because clones have to start as babies and you raise them up. When I was 12 and masturbated, I didn't get arrested for it, touching a 12-year-old. But <laughs> if I helped drug off my clone, is that pedophilia? Interesting. That's fucking... I mean, this is a complex bit here, man. Yeah, very complex. We talk about like going back and killing baby Hitler. We never go back to f- fucking ourselves. <laughs> this is yeah. a sci-fi novel here. Um, yeah. Is it pedophilia? Well, I guess it depends at what age. It's also incest. <laughs> Did you groom yourself? <laughs> now you got pedophilia, incest, and cloning, and yeah. gay. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, boxes we're checking here. I think we hit most of Reddit. Yeah. Oh, man. I think I think that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I think it's really cool. Mark Norris yeah. says, thumbs up. <laughs> Fucking yourself is fine. You know, it's kind of like how you can make a joke about yourself. Like, you can't make a joke about black people because they're like, hey, you're not black. That's weird. But if you make it, you fuck yourself, it's okay. Let me try another one. No, all right. I, I, got, got I was there. talking to a guy and he goes, he goes, you know, wasted potential is the worst thing in the world. And I was like, oh, it's pretty bad. And he was like, you know, this is a weird example, but Hitler, you know? And I was like, uh, uh-huh. uh That is a weird uh, example. It's a weird one. He goes, he goes, you know, could have been uh, much bigger, you know, could have been much bigger, made a few wrong choices. Could have been <laughs> and I was like, yeah, man, I don't know if that's wasted. Like, I, I, I don't like Hitler. I wouldn't call him an underachiever. Uh, I feel like he did his damage. It's also weird to be like, you know, you know who wasted, like, I think wasted talent. I'm not like, you, you know who comes to mind is uh, is Lindsay Lohan and uh, and Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> both should have both should have had a bigger impact. Yes. He should have, <laughs> yeah, he should have maybe made a few different decisions, maybe in Dunkirk. And uh, she should have tried to, way, to find a way to sign on for Mean Girls too. I don't know. Uh, right, right. He could have uh, taken a few vacations, you know. He did. He's literally the poster guy for doing too much. Six million Jews is a good number, right? He killed. I won't call it a good number. Well, right? you know what I mean. It's a. Uh, it's a high. Called number. a very upsetting number, actually. Yeah. But, uh, it's a big number. I think that was like, Louis C.K. But he's like, he killed a, a few too many Jews. I yeah, say. yeah. <laughs> a few yeah. Too many. No, that's great. It's so true. It's a weird choice. But he was, uh, a, a, he achieved a lot. You know, you can't deny that. But yeah, uh, I call him an overachiever. Yeah. Yeah. He I definitely say... achieved too much. Yeah. Yeah, he did a lot. I mean, the, 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 the camps, the trains, the rounding up, the not the to invading. mention. The, what's that? The invading. Invading, the manufacturing. He made all these yeah. planes and. Great painter, too. Yeah, solid painter. I'd say he's one of my favorite, yeah. <laughs> I'm a big Francis Bacon and Hitler man. Those are my two. <laughs> he's as, an artist. Uh... <laughs> the man's an artist. Uh, no, that's big. Yeah. All right, this um, is, this is I, horrible. All right, what do you got? All right. So but I was thinking back to my single days and how hard it was to, like, meet a lady. You know, like, go up to a woman and a hit on her just cold i remember you doing pre- pretty damn well well i i learned the the ropes a little but it yeah. it was a lot of it was this is what I, I equate it to hooking up with a woman you don't know is like trying to get through tsa without a ticket you know you had to like go hey i'm a i'm a good guy you know you have to be charming you have to work your way through but once you've already hooked up with a girl that was like pre-check she's like oh yeah you're good come on in Ooh, but once good. you get married 
Then you're part of the flight crew. She's like, you again? You're here? I didn't even know you were, you were here today or whatever. I, I need a good marriage one. It's funny, too, that like, except you're the one trying to f- pat them down. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, you, you're you're in. You're in. When no you're, ticket. Yeah, no they're ticket like, is they're single. Like, they're like, why would I let you in? I know nothing about you. Yes, exactly. You know I mean? like, exactly. Uh, I need to vet you a little. Yeah. But once you're in, you, you got pre-check. Come on in. You don't, you don't even have to get dressed. Or get you're trying dressed. to get your stuff in here? Right, right. But yeah. marriage is clear. Eh, no one knows what clear is. What about mar- marriage is like the pilot trying to get the gate of the plane into the gate? Oh, like... Uh, like, like talking to the control tower, the pilot versus the control tower. Yeah, but now we're off know security. Him, but they still won't. Right, right. They still won't let him in. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Because he's like, we got to wait. We got to wait till that they let us. That happens every time, right? Yeah, we're going to taxi a while. Yeah. So now I'm like the horn, the horny husband who's like, I'm waiting for you to be ready. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. We flew in a little early, even though the control tower wasn't letting us because of uh, overcast sky. Yeah, and yeah. There's some red clouds on the horizon. <laughs> Uh-huh. There's something about there's something about um not letting you in. I need to make sure that you're not dangerous. Like treat, yes. treat you like a terrorist, I think. Yes. Like Which, the word dangerous, I think, resonates for both. Right. Because women are like, I can't go home with you. I don't even know you could be a murderer. Yeah. Which you had to go, I'm not a murderer. I'm a good, you know, here's here's my ID. Trust me. I'm supposed to be on this plane. You know? Like, I think, uh, I think you're going to want me to get through security. But then when you once you've already had sex with them, then it's you're in. Then you're stamped. You pre-check. Then you're like, you up? And they're like, come on over. And that's when a pat-down actually makes a difference. Like, all right, what are you carrying here? Uh, right. Be heavy enough. Yeah. Um, but the marriage thing, that's where I'm struggling. It's like, that's not bad. Control tower. Control tower is not right? bad. Like, like the flight, vagina's a control tower. I mean, think about like the movie Airplane. Like, that was the whole thing. Like, Yeah. That was a great movie. That was like a running, that's my favorite hangover movie. Oh, really? Every time, like, yeah, absolutely. So good. Dad and Grandma's Boy. All right. Love Grandma's Boy. Uh, I got one. I have a whole chunk on, like, companies. Uh... You know, trying to let you know their opinions on things. I kind of make fun of Netflix and HBO, like trying to be like allies. And I have a bit about, you know, Bud Light. And now I'm, I have working on a bit like, you know, basically saying like years ago, Chick-fil-A made this mistake. Mm. Telling us they were anti-gay marriage, which is like, you know, you make chicken. No one gives a shit. No one, like if you have poultry opinions, great. But like no one gives a fuck. I was like, if you, if you want to tell us you're bad, if you want to tell us you're fucked up social commentary, at least work it into the ad. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we at Chick Fil A were against a woman's right to choose unless it's a uh, unless she chooses the morning uh, chicken biscuit breakfast sandwich <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know what I'm going for here? Sure, sure. I'm flubbing the delivery here, but it, it's something there. I think. Wait, wait. You're saying if you're gonna have like a controversial opinion, yeah, at least working out of the ad somehow, so it's not just out of nowhere. You're just like shocking us. Oh, uh, like, like why are you telling us your anti game? It has nothing to do with your product. Oh, interesting. But if they work it in the ad, they won't sell. I know, but at least then it like makes sense. It makes no sense why you're just telling people, uh-huh. you know, you don't like gay people getting married. It's kind of like, why did you even say that? You're a chicken place. <laughs> <laughs> you sell chicken. Yeah. Tell me about your sides or something or your fucking, you know, lemonade. I don't know. Oh, at least make it. Uh... At least make it relevant. Right. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Make it relevant. Like put it into the. The the pitch. Right, right. Yeah. But you got to put in the pitch where it's still, the food is still sellable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. We're against gay marriage, but we're not against the meeting of chicken and Polynesian sauce or something. Yeah. Uh, is, that Poly- is that the Polynesian sauce place? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They Polynesian got Polynesian, they got honey mustard, they got barbecue. I've never got eaten there before in my life. Oh, it's double good. Double butter oppression potatoes. It is good. That homophobia really adds to the flavor. We uh, put the home in homophobia. Yeah, there you go. What uh Home yeah. cooking. Homo <laughs> cooking. Yeah. Uh, I like putting that in the ad. And then you could do that for the, the the cake. You could 
Yeah, call back, back to the I'm cake. trying to connect all this shit. Yeah, yeah we'll the cake it out. is like uh See us on the road, folks, and it all it'll all come together. <laughs> <laughs> we don't approve of uh laying down with another man, but we do approve of laying down seven layers of icing or something. Right, right. All right. Well, this is all shit right here. Should we wrap it up? I think so. Well, I'm buzzed. We've been drinking all day. This is probably too much alcohol in our lives, but what are you going to do? <laughs> Can you get that out of that box right there? That, oh, we got boxes. That banner. We won oh, a we contest. Got... Wow. Yeah. The YouTube channel Joke World did a March Madness. Oh. And we won. Is that right? Yeah. I don't even know what that is. How does that work? They put a bunch of different podcasts, comedy podcasts against each other, and we came out on top. What? Who'd, we, a... who'd we beat out? Last round was Chrissy Chaos. Oh, hey, my God. Hey, suck it, Christy. An honor to be against uh, our good friend Chris Stefano, and also suck our penis, Chris. Yeah, blow me with your weird glasses. <laughs> we love, um, we love thank you. you. That's a great uh, YouTube channel, Joke World. Check it out. And what is this? Dick Fuel. Oh, they they give me T-shirts. A guy makes zines, not magazines. Zines. He took the maga out of magazine. Oh, we got a card here. Open bar, free food. Need we say more? Save the date. We're tying the knot, dear Sam and Mark. We know Atlanta's a long way from NY, but we wanted to tell y'all we're saving a seat. And a paper plane in honor of our favorite comedians, Pod. Thanks for putting on some of the best shows we've ever seen. Cheers, Colin and Alex. Hey, Mazel Thank Tov. Thank you very much. How cute. That's a hot couple. Send us photos of you guys making out. Hold on. Wait a minute. Did they send us this? Oh, okay. This is different. What's that? There you go. There you go. Sam and Mark, we got a little card here. Whoa, Nelly. What do we got here? It says, uh, well, this is a long thing, but Sam and Mark, I caught your Neil Brennan app where you guys all said you don't feel sexy. I know this is a podcast by comedians with other comedians and a few randos. So I am 98% certain you were all joking, but in case, here's a reminder to feel and think of yourselves as sexy <laughs> seriously and gen- sure seriously and genuinely i am fat as fuck all right sexy uh, bitches uh i'm a fat as fuck brown girl not lizzo another one can feel sexy and relate to dj khaled's song for free then you two can feel it too i had uh, sorry the handwriting is a little jumbled i had these small tokens with an affirmation made for you to always remind you of your sexiness. Well, wow. it ain't going to work, but I appreciate it. For free is a song where Drake ruminates on his own sexual prowess. By the time he reaches the chorus, he realizes he's so good at sex that he should be compensated. Well, I will never feel that way, but thank wow. you. Wow, what a nice lady. Read that. Sam, for those hopefully so well rare done. times Hallmark. that Gary can't join you on the road trigger warning corny cheesy encouraging messages feel free to toss in the trash if it's not your jam what is it did i fart in this card maybe whoa a gift card mark you seem to get uncomfortable when complimented and praised so i will try to keep this short and emotionless as possible oh god i can't read this this is gonna be sappy and gay you opened it, so check it out. It's This gets worse. Free shirts are awesome, and stolen shirts are thrilling to you. But you also deserve to choose one and buy a shirt for no other reason than you feel and look good in it. Please treat yourself to a shirt that makes you feel worth it. Be it a leopard print, silk, button-up shirt, or plain, well-fitting shirt, whatever you get, get something that you love but would normally talk yourself out of because of lost... Because of cost or because you already have enough shirts? P.S. Burke Kreischer seems passionate about a James Purse t-shirts, or maybe he's just sponsored by them. All well, right. Those are fancy shirts. Are they? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we love Thank you guys. You. Thank you so much for listening. I got a Walgreens gift card I see here. What is yours? Uh, Visa. Oh, yeah. My, no, mine's too, but I think it's, it says Walgreens. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess they bought it at Walgreens. Thank oh. you. This is too much money, whoever that this was. stupid. Thank you so much. We love you. Oh. And uh, should we plug some dates or something here? Uh, yeah. Uh, when does this come out, Matt? 
be the end of May. Man, we are backlogging like motherfuckers. All right, Illinois. well, you can see me in Portland, Maine. Uh, fucking, uh, uh, oh, good city. Oh, I love it. Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. Mashantucket, Connecticut. Uh, Richmond, Virginia. Greensboro, North Carolina. Asheville, Charlotte. Knoxville, Memphis. Birmingham, Chattanooga. Nashville, Denver. Uh, Santa Fe, San Antonio, Houston. Way more. So many dates coming up. They're all on samuel.com. Yeah, we just we got Columbus on there. We have to reschedule that in Cincinnati, Bethlehem, York, all that shit. But it's all on my website now. See you there. Hell yeah. I'm all over the road. I'll see you in Australia. I'll see you in uh, Austin, Toronto. Well, you name it. Uh, check out the website. Then I'm announcing a theater tour. It should be already out by the time this comes out. So check my website. Check the tabloids you name it thank you netflix special coming out soon and uh, we'll see you all in hell thanks a lot praise allah we love Keep you it up.